2006 World Sudoku Championship was held in Lucca, Italy. Thomas Snyder of the U.S. was leading the competition up until the final round when they were given this puzzle. Thomas got hung up on this puzzle and ended up finishing second. He and the other competitors got upset at the organizers afterward. They complained that the puzzle needed a bit of guesswork to complete. I'm going to show you not only the point where they got stuck, but what strategy you need to solve this puzzle logically. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you want to see is that you have this two coming down, column eight, and this two cutting across row six. There's only two places for two here in block six. And whenever you only have two possibilities for a candidate in a three or three block, you can mark that, and it's called Snyder Notation. And yes, Snyder Notation is named after Thomas Snyder, the guy who complained about this puzzle. But what this does is this creates a pointing pair. So now a two can't be anywhere else along column seven because it has to be somewhere here in block six. And so with that pointing pair coming down and this two coming down and a two cutting across here, we can solve for two here in block nine. And you can do the same thing with the three. So you got this three cutting across, this three coming over row eight. So we have another nine rotation for the threes. A pointing pair coming up. Threes can't be anywhere else along column seven. You got this three and you got this three it's all for three here. And now with the fours, and yep, there's three in the corner, even back in 2006. All right. With the fours, you can do the same type of thing. You got a four cutting across, four coming up here, two possibilities for the four, pointing pair coming down. And with this four cutting across, we can solve for four here in block six. So, so far, if you're focusing on this side of the puzzle, you'd be making some progress. Um, we also have some hidden singles. You got the seven cutting across, coming down. Only one place for seven, so you can solve that right there. And then with this seven and this seven and these two columns, and then the sevens in these two rows, you can solve for seven here in block five. After doing that, you can see how the five cuts across row seven. We can solve for five right here. And this creates a one four eight naked triple, and I recommend filling in these naked triples when you can because it's going to restrict what can be in the rest of this row and also in the block we can remove the four from here and we can remove the eight from there if you're not familiar with what naked triples are all about and i'll highlight this to show you what i'm talking about uh check out my free sudoku solving guide i'll put a link in the pinned comment below also consider supporting me on my buy me a coffee page I'm trying to invest back into this channel and also get better at Sudoku. I'd like to one day go to the Sudoku World Championship. We can focus up here in column five. Since we have put five, there's five candidates given there after we put in that seven. We got a one, three, eight, nine. You might notice you have a one, three, and a nine in this row. So that means this now has to be an eight. And as soon as I get out of color mode, I'll put the eight right there which now that means we can now solve this for a one, that's a four, and that's an eight. So we quickly got through that naked triple. We we'll remove the colors, we don't need that anymore. And this will give us a three, nine. Okay, after the three, nine, we can look at these two eights and this eight to see if we can solve for an eight in block four. And with these two eights and the eight cutting across row two, only one place for an eight up in block one. All right, uh, something else you want to notice is you got this three across, this three coming down. So the threes are now a pointing pair right here. I'll mark that Snyder mark. That'll come into play a little bit later. And then we can actually solve for a four here in block five because we got this four and this four. Anytime you have four of a candidate going into a block, you know you can solve for it right away. The only place left is right there. Let's continue on with the fours here. Let's see where a four can be here in column one. All right. Can't be here because of this four. Can't be here because of this four. And it can't be here because of this four. We can actually solve for a four right there. Nice. And now let's see about the threes. Three can't be here because of here. This three can't be here because of this three. We can now solve for a three right there and remove that Snyder mark. And what is remaining is a six, nine naked pair. I do like to mark the naked pairs. 
that help me with the solving and the naked triples. I won't mark more than that in championship puzzles because most of the strategies you will find need that. Now in this puzzle, we're gonna need something a little bit more, but I'm gonna show you how you can find it. Stay tuned. All right, after that, what we wanna look at is, and this is gonna be a little bit harder to find, is you wanna look in this row right here and look for some restrictions. You know you got a three, four, eight, and nine. So you're looking for a one, two, five, six, seven. Well, I got a one, five, seven right here. So this has to be a two or a six. Okay, no big deal. But if you come down here to row seven, you might notice one, five, seven here. This is also a two or a six. So this forms a naked pair. So a two and a six can't be anywhere else along column two. This will form some restrictions for us. You do want to find this naked pair. So now this is going to be one five seven. We can remove the five from there. We can remove the seven from here, and we can remove the one from there. All right, I'll show you how that plays in a little bit later. So let's get out of the color mode, and now we're going to look here in block four. You got this one five, so this is going to be a one five six. And what's critical to note is that now these sixes form a pointing pair as well because they have to be in block four. They can only be in column three. So six can't be in any of these spots anymore. I will use this pointing pair a couple times to do some future solving. Okay, after that, let's look up here in row three. You see I have a, a one and a six here. And there's only two spaces they, they aren't looking at. So this is a 1-6. This is called a hidden pair. It means that you think there could be other candidates there. But since the 1 and 6 come across row 3, they have to be somewhere here in block 2. They're going to take up those two spots. Nothing else can be there. So this ends up being a 2-3-9 naked triple. So this would be 2-9-3-9 and a 2-3. So this will create some more restrictions across row 3. But that's not what they're complaining about. We haven't gotten to that point yet. We're getting close. All right. At this point, you are going to need some kind of advanced strategy to make progress. This is where they got hung up because there's no easy solve here. And there's some quite a few crazy advanced strategies. You could look here and see that the only places for the five in these two columns are these cells. And you could actually do a skyscraper, but that won't really do much for you. You'll get them to make some eliminate candidates, but you're not going to solve anything. There's actually a continuous loop if you use these cells, but it won't get you any more solving. You won't solve any cells with that. That's not what they're talking about. What they're talking about is something that you have to look for a single candidate strategy that's looking for some restrictions. You notice how the nines and sixes are limited to two spots here in column one, in particular the nines. Is there another column you see where the nines are restricted to only two spots? Well, right here, but that doesn't line up with column one. But also right here, you notice that this is only a, can be a five or a nine. That's the same row, row two and row eight as column one here. This is an X-wing. This is a strategy that they couldn't find. And what they complained about, they said, it's not normal to find these type of strategies. It requires some guesswork, and it takes a lot longer to look for a logical pattern like an X-wing versus just bifurcating, which means just pick one possibility here and look for uh, something that breaks the puzzle, and then you can try the other candidate. And so that's what they're complaining about. They thought that the X-wing was not fair for this competition. But you notice, you can actually find it pretty easily if you just looked in columns one and columns nine. And if you want to solve X-Wings better, subscribe to Smart Hobbies. Also, check out my X-Wing tutorial. I'll put a link right here. So if you think this is too hard, let me know in the comments. If you think it's fair, I also want to hear about that. What we have here is a nine is either going to be here and here. And this would be a six, and that'd be a five, right? Or this is a six, and I would be here, 
in here and that'd be a five. So either way, you got a nine here and here or here and here. So what we know with the X wing is that you cannot have a nine anywhere else along row two or row eight because the nines are gonna be in one of these orange squares. Awesome, I will keep the colors up so I don't have to mark and remove all the nines here. The one cell you want to focus on here is kind of want to go down here in column eight and look at this cell. All right, we have a two, three, four, seven, eight. We need a one, five, six, nine. Well, the six is a pointing pair, so this actually cannot be a six. And with this five, it can't be a five. And now with the nines being an X wing, this can't be a nine. We can actually solve this cell for a one. This is what you needed to find to make progress in this puzzle. And once you find that, remove that to a one now you can see we're going to be able to move forward we're not done yet there's still some good good solving here some good candidates that we got to figure out but now you can see the one's limited to only this spot right here and we can figure out this naked triple of the 157 right there looking good all right if you look in here what can this cell be right it can't be a one can't be a two can't be a four five six seven eight or nine so this has to be a Three, which means this is going to be a three. So we can solve that. Gives us a one eight right here. All right, making some good progress there. Now we know we got the sixes point up here. We can actually do some more solving right here. Let's look at this cell. What could this be? Well, it can't be a one, two, or a three. Can't be a four. Can't be a five. Can't be a six because of the point pair of sixes. And it can't be an eight. And it can't be a nine because of the X wing. So this has to be a seven nice and since that's a seven if you look right here what can this one be all right this can't be a one can't be a two because of the two three nine right there can't be a three uh can't be a five can't be a six seven eight or a nine because the nine is part of this two three nine so this actually has to be a four all right we all saw that four remove this snyder mark and we can solve this four four Great, making progress in the puzzle. And now with this two, three, nine, you look right here, seven or eight, this has to be a seven and this has to be an eight. That's the only thing left in this row, which means this is a one and that's an eight. Now we can solve, we got this one right here, one place left for a one and block three is right there, which gives us a six, it gives us a one. Nice, and now we're looking for a five, nine. Well, I got a five here, so this is a nine. And now we know we can solve this for five, which is gonna automatically give us the nines in these two spots. And this is gonna be your six. So we figured out our X-wing. Beautiful. And since we figured out the X-wing, I'll remove those colors. Love that. All right, let's get back to some solving here. Okay, it looks like we need uh, two six up here. But remember, the six, this pointing pair, again, is gonna help us out. So that's gotta be your two. That's gotta be your six. And then this is going to be a two right here. We have what's called a full house. Eight cells already filled in, one remaining. And so we know we can solve this with certainty, four or five. And we also allow this to be a six. We've got another full house in the column. And I don't see a five right there. So I'll mark that for a five. Awesome. It means this is going to be a six and a five. I love displacing these bi-value cells to get some solves in. But these two fives and this five, we can solve this cell right here for a five looking good and then we cut across here what do we miss it looks like a two and a six i actually can't solve the two to six just yet but why don't we solve this cell since it's a nice full house again all right so we got a nine right there let's try to finish up the ones i got two ones here got two ones here i know i can solve this for a one which would give us a two nine but i got a two there this is your nine, and now we're going to be able to solve all three of these, because that's a two, that's a three, that's a nine, that's a three. Looking good. Another full house. We can solve for a six there, and now with this nine, this has got to be your nine, displacing that Snyder two. Awesome. And then we got a two here, and the last digit is going to be a six. Doku X-Wings are much more common in world championship solving these days. Check out this video to see what I mean. Thank you so much for watching.